But before that, I want to appreciate how this author has actually found this exploit because this vulnerability is not public, right? I mean, the original person which has thought about this exploit is, I mean, <laughs> way more smart than any one of us. So that's very interesting. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to discuss a very interesting blog post which I came across the other day from GitHub, somebody from GitHub's team. And what they have mentioned is about a vulnerability found in Chrome, which allows with the help of JavaScript execution, allows you to gain complete access of the Chrome process running on the system, right? That means a Chrome remote code execution plus sandbox escape. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now, technically a browser in terms of security has one job that is to keep its memory and other tabs memory from being corrupted by arbitrary code running inside the browser and pretty much this is why cloudflare workers work in a v8 environment this is why so much of the things work without actual proper isolation right because containerization would be a bit too much for a Chrome process. So they want to make it fast and they want to make it secure. But there is a bug in Chrome until Chrome version 92, I think. I'm not sure like, yeah, it is patched in 93 point this version right here. So what this bug is, let's let's discuss this in, in a little bit of detail on how this bug actually exploit the system. So this bug is a very specific vulnerability inside the V8 engine and how it comes compiles your JavaScript code just in time, right? So just to reiterate on what JIT compilation is, this sort of compilation means that at the runtime, when your JavaScript code is running, what V8 would do is it would try to see what kind of code executions are happening over and over again, and it's gonna optimize those calls, right? What does that do? For example, let's say you have a function which runs on clicking, right? And it calculates some prime numbers or something. Sure, one way is whenever you click, just JavaScript engine just reads it one line at a time, executes the instruction, that's it. Another way is because JavaScript knows that hey this function is being clicked so many times I might just optimize it somehow that it runs a bit faster because I know more about this function because now it is executing right so JavaScript sees that hey this is uh, only an integer coming in this function as the first argument there are only two arguments so let me do this optimization so when JavaScript v8 engine is doing this optimization uh, one of the optimizations which it does is with the object reference property let's say you have a single object like this o1 with an a property and one and O2 with an A property of 1000. When you're trying to access this object, I mean, objects are a bit complicated in JavaScript. Therefore, the optimizations around this are even more complex, right? That's what this article also says somewhere. Yeah, property access is a fairly complex system in V8 that has led to a number of exploitable bugs in the past also. But this bug again, involves more or less the use of this property access. So for example, when you're writing objects like these, JIT compilation will kick in if you're accessing a bunch of properties very often, it will see the shape of the object, it will see if it could perform some optimization, some hacks basically, and speed up your JavaScript code from machine code, right? So it does that, but there is an inconsistency between two pieces of code in V8 itself. So what happens is that one piece of code in V8 modifies this object print somehow that how this property should be accessed or how the something should be accessed and the second piece of code reads it in a wrong way right now if you're interested in this technical details i would highly recommend you to read this article because i wouldn't be able to go into a lot of details right away in this video because to be honest i don't also go so much deep into v8 that i understand a lot of this stuff but what i would recommend is going out checking it out the link is in the description for this article but essentially what's happening here is like i discussed v8 optimizes property access of a certain object and then you exploit it to gain access to a part of memory which you are not allowed to have access to now let's let's actually discuss that in a little bit of more depth but before that, I want to appreciate how this author has actually found this exploit because this vulnerability is not public, right? What Google did is that Google said that, hey, we have a vulnerability, which is serious. It's remote code execution and stuff. And it released a code patch for that, right? That's it. So what this person did is that it compared the diff for the patch before and after and then tried to think of an exploit, which is smart. But I mean, the original person which has thought about this exploit is, I mean, <laughs> way more smart than any one of us. So that's very interesting. Okay, so this is the part where fun happens, which is basically we have replaced 
objects with arrays because arrays are object in javascript so uh, the person who has created a proof of concept for this what they have done is they're trying to run it to certain iterations why this is being happening because you know javascript needs to run your code again and again to actually kick in the just-in-time compilation right so when you do stuff like this and this 19 3 to 1 might be a very specific number which is maybe like you know v8 sees how many iterations of the calls or anything has already been done and once that is done i will probably kick in that particular behavior right which we want once that iteration amount is done we just end up with an optimized version of this function call so whenever this function call would be happening that would not be going through your regular path in javascript but it will be a much more speedy and optimized call again we optimize another function which is the oob read for some reason and what we finally do is we finally perform this this sort of attack again you will understand the specifics of the attack how it works in when you read the article but the gist here is that you try to optimize a function foo with an arr of one which has a specific size in memory so it has 10 elements filled with just number two and have a property a attached to one right all of these are optimized in a specific way then what you really do is you break that optimization by calling foo of arr which is this array right here right now this array has a different size altogether it is 30 times 4 right so it's it has a different size it has a different memory allocation and a jit compilation bug which we discussed like jit confuses itself um, between two pieces of software the first one responsible for the optimization and second one for actually running the stuff so once that happens what you eventually end up having is that you now have inside your javascript world access to a certain part of memory where you can write arbitrary stuff, right? And read arbitrary stuff as well. Why this is important? This is important because now you have technically escaped Chrome's sandbox. Chrome, what it tries to do is it tries to run every single tab, every single process inside of a sandbox environment. That means that execution, whatever JavaScript you're writing, that could not damage anything outside of the memory it has been allocated. But the memory which you get after this exploit happens is not belonging to that particular process or that particular tab so what the problem here is is that now you are able to write arbitrary code at this memory location and then you can execute it with another exploit which is involving WebAssembly. again it is a bit high level exploit but the idea here is that the second exploit which does arbitrary code execution using WebAssembly, which is again another exploit which you need to do. So it is a relatively difficult exploit to exploit, but it is possible, right? So once you have an out of bounds read and write primitive for a JavaScript array, the exploit to gain arbitrary code execution is fairly standard. So this again, this, this boils down to the fact that we have done all of this stuff only to gain permission out of bounds read and write permission that means you are reading and writing on memory which you're not supposed to read and write right that's that's the end game for sandboxing basically so once you do that you have also this guy also has a proof of concept for this where the code which is written actually starts i think a terminal process let's see yeah so if you call it on ubuntu you're gonna see this proof of concept.js actually corrupts the memory and starts a bin sh process right obviously bad for anything which is using you know which is 100 percent relying on v8's sandbox model like cloudflare workers for example but this again this is patched and this vulnerability is fixed but this just tells us that the software now is so complicated that it is almost impossible to not have security bugs let alone just regular bugs inside of popular pieces of software like v8 for example v8 is like one of the most i think the most used piece of software on the planet right now because pretty much everyone uses a browser and chrome has the maximum share of browsers on the market so this was my first impression with this bug in chrome nothing to worry about as long as you update your browser which you should if you are not updating your browser then somebody can just send you a link and execute arbitrary programs on your system which is bad so you should be updating your browser and staying safe that is all for this video let me know in the comments what you think about this format where we discuss about security related issues and go deep into some of these things that's all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon